Welcome to the Arcadia Unified School District Board of Education meeting on April 11th, 2023. It is 7.06 p.m. and I'm calling this meeting to order, which is being recorded and live streamed on YouTube and can be accessed at boardmeeting.ausd.net. Roll call. The entire board is here, so is the executive team. And we will now state the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. Stand, raise your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I also have today's inspiration. So, on April 2nd, uh, it was the World Autism Awareness Day. And later this, this evening, uh, we will be voting on a resolution recognizing April as Autism Acceptance Month. Everyone's lives are touched by someone with autism. So let's take a moment to reflect on some thoughts on autism. Even for parents of children that are not on a spectrum, there is no such thing as a normal child. There needs to be a lot more emphasis on what a child can do instead of what he cannot do. Autism doesn't come with an instructional guide. It sometimes comes with a family who will never give up. Why fit in when you were born to stand out? If they can't learn the way we teach, we teach the way they learn. Some people with autism may not be able to speak or answer to their name but they can still hear your words and feel your kindness. Some thoughts on autism. Um, I'm asking for an approval on our agenda. I move to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? A second. Um, motion made by Mrs. Chavez, second by Mrs. Yee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Agenda approved. There was no report of action taken in closed session. We are now up to our student representative report. Good evening. My name is Envitha Marlapati, and I am the student representative to the Board of Education. Tonight, I am joined by our very own ASB historian, and this lovely lady is the one who makes all of our historian and publicity reports for each of our meetings, so we are so grateful for her. And she's here to help me report on various school and student affairs, events, and activities. Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Ashley Lowe. I'm the ASB historian. Thank you so much for having me today. ASB has successfully hosted the 2023 Spring Preview on Thursday, March 30th from 4 to 6.30 p.m. at the AHS campus. All middle and high school students were invited to enjoy the orientation, where they were able to preview the variety of clubs and organizations offered on campus. With the help of the seniors of Merit at Work, SMW, and Link Crew team, campus tours were provided to the students that were interested in learning more about the campus. The ASB final elections voting will occur from Monday, April 17th to Tuesday, April 18th, and the 2023 to 2024 ASB leaders will be announced on Wednesday, April 19th. On Friday, March 17th, the Sophomore Council held a bonding event called You Look Good, where sophomores decorated mini mirrors with paint markers, stickers, and beads. There were also fun board games to play and a free bubble bar with assorted fruit teas and toppings for the class of 2025 to enjoy. It was great to see all of the unique creations everyone came up with when designing their personal mirrors. On Friday, March 13th, Senior Council hosted a bonding event for the seniors at the Pasadena Ice Skating Center called Parad Ice. Seniors were able to ice skate for free and enjoy each other's company at the bonding event. 
On March 30th, ASB hosted the 2023 Spring Preview Day. The AHS campus was filled with lively groups showing what AHS has to offer. SMW and Link Crew members gave tours around AHS, academic teams, clubs, parent organizations, athletics, and counselors set up booths to share what they are all about. There were also food trucks there, such as Handel's Ice Cream. The club's commissioner successfully held spring preview on March 30th, giving all clubs on campus the opportunity to showcase their respective activities. On March 30th, the EDI committee ran a booth during spring preview where members passed out small informational cards to parents and students about the committee recruitment and upcoming plans for the next school year. The committee will be participating in Wellness Week and hosting a lunch activity in collaboration with the Wellness Center on April 17th. The activity will include fun tattoos and wraparound twine where students can enjoy glamming themselves up on finals week. All right, and moving on. Link Crew has successfully recruited new Link Crew members for the 2023 to 2024 school year. Science Olympiad competed at the state competition on April 8th. Furthermore, Arcadia Science Bowl will be hosting its annual Slap Bowl competition later this month on April 21st, and all the academic teams are currently undergoing captain elections and will, be, will begin tryout soon. The Performing Arts Commissioner is starting to work on April's Performer of the Month, representing percussion. Additionally, Orcasus just started selling tickets in a flash sale for their spring production titled The Muses Canvas, which will be on April 27th, 28th, and 29th. On March 23rd, Arcadia High School hosted the last collab sport clinic of the year, where middle school students had the opportunity to shadow various sports teams at Arcadia and get a preview of the potential Arcadia athlete life. Additionally, boys volleyball, boys tennis, boys golf, swim and dive, badminton, track and field, and baseball are still undefeated in the Pacific League. Let's go Arcadia. Senior Council will be hosting an annual traditional pageant called Our AHS, which was formerly called Mr. and Miss AHS. Eight seniors will compete in a two-day lunch event, evaluating their intellectual knowledge according to the core curriculum through a Jeopardy game and their charisma through a talent show style performance. At the end, two winners will be crowned. Junior Council successfully concluded their final bonding event of the school year, Color Me Musubi, yesterday, Wednesday, April 12th, from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. at the rally court. At the event, juniors were able to create a time capsule of their high school experience and fill it with photos of friends, a letter to their future self, and other cute decorations while snacking on spam musubis and refreshing thigh tea. Junior Council also concluded the second launch of their class crewneck fundraiser and held distribution on Friday, March 31st. And last but not least, Freshman Council is in the process of planning their last bonding event of the 2022 to 2023 school year. Students will write letters addressed to their senior selves while enjoying butterfly pea lemonade and cinnamon rolls. And that concludes today's report. Thank you. Thank you for the report, students. Um, and our student rep, Anvita Malapati, is excused due to a previous request. Thank, Thank you. you. Although I'll miss your comments at the end of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good evening, everyone. Uh, I do not have any audience comments, so we're now moving on to our action items. First item is appointment of Arcadia High School Assistant Principal, effective July 25th, 2023. Dr. Harishu. All right, thank you so much. We are so excited tonight to bring forth our <coughs> first appointment, uh, management report uh, appointment for this recruitment season. Uh, as a result of Mr. Finn's retirement, uh, the high school initiated a recruitment process to uh, hire a new assistant principal. And from a process perspective, we had 51 applications that were screened in, which was a really healthy number. Of the 51 applications, seven were invited to interview uh, with the district. And of those seven, four moved on for a second round of interviews with the district. And with that, I'll turn it over to Dr. Forsey to introduce our finalist. All right, thank you, Kevin. We are very excited to welcome Samantha Joan as our newest assistant principal candidate of Arcadia High School. In a way, we're, we're welcoming Samantha back home. She is a 1995 AHS graduate and the current assistant principal of, at Beverly Hills High School. As a former middle school math teacher, Samantha is prepared for any challenge. Samantha served as a math teacher for eight years in Buena Park and has been an administrator in the Beverly Hills Unified School District 
for the past four years. We're very excited to have Samantha back in the fold and also to welcome her husband, um, her mother, and her two children here tonight with her. So with that, I'd like to recommend Samantha Jung as the new assistant principal for Arcadia High School. Okay. We have a motion. I will move to approve the appointment of Samantha Jung to the Arcadia High School assistant principal position. Second. Motion made by Mrs. Chung, second by Mrs. Chavez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, thank you so much um, for approving me for this position. I am, um, as stated before, so happy to be coming back home. Um, as previously mentioned, I have my husband Warren here with me, my son Jonathan and my daughter Stephanie, and my mom Grace, who have um, been with me throughout this journey. Um, when I was asked during my interview, why do I want to leave where I, I'm currently at? Um, my answer had nothing to do with actually leaving, but wanting to come here, coming back home um, to where I graduated from, because I know what Arcadia stands for, and it was really exciting to be accepted and, um, and welcomed back. So thank you for that. and welcome. Um, our next item, action item is Arcadia Unified School District and Arcadia Pupil Support Services Association public hearing and approval of tentative agreements for 2022 and 2023. Um, Dr. Hirshi, can I introduce? Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Just gonna say. <laughs> oh. Okay to leave with the oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, you for welcome. bringing the family. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Go. Yeah, yes. thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amber wants to get some pictures, so thank you all for obliging. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. Okay, all right. Still Just reading the room. <laughs> Hold on. So we are so excited tonight to bring forth our, uh, the first of uh, three uh, TAs. And um, as you know, we've been engaging in interest-based bargaining with APSA for the better part of a decade now. And uh, we are just so appreciative of that collaborative relationship that APSA brings to the table each year. And I just want to recognize APSA President uh, Stephanie Perez and her bargaining team. Uh, for all of the collaborative work that they do with us. Not only do we have solid outcomes that are based in shared interests, but we also operate in a way that contributes to the health of this organization. And that means a lot to us here in Arcadia. So, so appreciative of, of the bargaining unit. So with that, uh, we recommend approval of the APSA tentative agreement and AB 1200. Thank you, Dr. Hsu. Um First, I will open the public hearing. Hearing no comments, I will now close the public hearing. Um, I'm calling for a motion to vote. I move approval of the 2022-23 tentative agreement between AUSD and Arcadia Pupil Support Services Association and AB 1200. Do we have a second? A second. Motion made by Mrs. Kinsler, seconded by Mrs. Yi. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All right, we're now on to declaration of need for fully qualified educators for the 2023-24 school year. Dr. Hershey. All right, tonight is the HR show. Yes. <laughs> Uh, declaration of need. Uh, so as you are aware, uh, AUSD is deep in our recruitment season and uh, by passing this uh, declaration of need, it allows us to utilize tools uh, allowable through ed code for us to be able to um, hire uh, teachers and be able to provide support credentially where needed uh, so that we can find the right person for each position. Uh, so with that, we ask for uh, approval of declaration of need for fully qualified educators for the 23-24 school year. All right, do we have a motion? I'll move to approve the declaration of need for fully qualified educators for the 2023-24 school year. I'll second. 
Motion made by Mrs. Yee, seconded by Mrs. Chavez. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. We are now up to, we have four resolutions today. First is number 222319, California Day of the Teacher, May 10th, 2023. Great. So uh, as you know, we have incredible, dedicated, innovative teachers here in Arcadia. We work with the best of the best. And so it is just a, an honor for us to designate May 10th uh, via this resolution as California Day of the Teacher. Mr. Chung, would you care to read the, motion, read the uh, resolution? Absolutely, Mr. President. A resolution of the Board of Education of the Arcadia Unified School District declaring May 10th, 2023 as California Day of the Teacher. Whereas the children of our public schools represent the future, and whereas the education of those children is vital to their success and the success of our society. And whereas qualified teachers are necessary to provide excellent educational opportunities for children and whereas, children, whereas teachers provide students with academic training appreciation of the arts, skill acquisition, training for jobs and careers, opportunities for physical and social development, and whereas Arcadia is fortunate to have over 400 qualified and highly dedicated teachers. And now therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Education of the Arcadia Unified School District hereby recognizes May 10th, 2023 as California Day of the Teacher. Thank you, Mr. Chung. Do we have a motion to pass a resolution? I move approval of resolution 2223-19, California Day of T the Teacher. We have a second. Second. <laughs> Motion made by Mrs. Kinsler, seconded by Mr. Chung. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Our next resolution is for Classified School Employee Week, May 21st to 27th, 2023. All right. Words used to describe our teachers, <laughs> innovative, dedicated, incredible, can be applied to our classified staff as well. We have phenomenal classified staff. And I often say that our classified staff are the unsung heroes of our district. They are often working behind the scenes to make sure that our operations are running super smooth. So with that, uh, we would like to recommend approval of resolution number 222320, classified school employee week which would be May 21st through 27th. This is you, would you care to read, read the resolution? Sure. Uh, resolution number 222320, um, Arcade Unified District declaring the week of May 21 through 27, 2023, Classified School Employee Week. Whereas a strong staff of classified employees is essential to the success of an educational organization, and whereas the Arcadia Unified School District's classified employees provide a myriad of vulnerable services to the schools, and whereas classified employees help provide for the welfare and safety of Arcadia Unified School District students and staff, and whereas the efforts of the classified staff are highly appreciated, but too often unheralded, and whereas Arcadia is fortunate to have over 500 classified employees contributing to the educational program. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Arcadia Unified School District hereby recognizes and honors the contribution of the classified employees to quality education in the Arcadia Unified School District and declares the week of May 21 through 27, 2023 as Classified School Employee Week. Thank you, Mrs. G. Do I have a motion to pass this resolution? I move to approve and pass resolution 22-23-20. Uh, classified School Employee Week, May 21 through 27 of this year. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made by Mrs. Chavez, second by Mrs. Kinsler. All those in favor say aye. 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 The resolution passes. Our next resolution is on Autism Acceptance Month. Um, <coughs> Mrs. Kinsler, would you care to read the resolution? Absolutely. Whereas the first National Autism Awareness Month was declared by the Autism Society in April 1970 and designated as Autism Acceptance Month in April 2021, and whereas autism is a lifelong de developmental disability that manifests during the first few years of a child's life 
and results from a neurological disorder that affects brain function and whereas autism spectrum disorder, ASD, can affect an individual's social, communication, and behavioral skills, and whereas autism affects children from all countries regardless of gender, race, or socioeconomic status, and whereas medical expenses for children with ASD are shown to be four to six times greater than those without ASD, and whereas while there is no cure for it, autism, it is well documented that if individuals with autism receive treatment early in their lives, it is often possible for those individuals to lead significantly improved lives. And whereas, while there is no diagnostic test for ASD, the increased awareness of autism and the detection services available to today make it possible for more people to be appropriately diagnosed with ASD. And whereas individuals with autism often require a lifetime of specialized and community support services to ensure their health and safety, as well as the resilience of their families as they manage the psychological and financial burdens autism presents. Whereas April is recognized as Autism Acceptance Month to increase awareness about autism signs and symptoms and promote acceptance of individuals with autism. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the governing board of Arcadia Unified School District that the month of April is designated as Autism Awareness Month. Thank you, Mrs. Kinsler. Do we have a motion to pass this resolution? I'll move to pass resolution number 222321, Autism Acceptance Month, April 2023. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made by Mrs. Yee, seconded by Mrs. Chavez. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion passes. The next item, next resolution is School Library Month. Mrs. Feeling Chavez. very resolute tonight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Chavez, would you care to read that resolution? Uh, resolution number 222322, School Library Month. Whereas the American Library Association has designated the 38th Annual National School Library Month as April 2023, and whereas school libraries provide materials for teachers and students that will encourage growth and knowledge, and whereas school libraries are resource centers that provide materials and technology that will develop literary, cultural, aesthetic appreciation, and ethical standards, and whereas school libraries provide students with access to information that reflects the ideas and beliefs of religious, social, political, historical, and ethnic groups and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture. And whereas school libraries provided books to encourage children to read for pleasure, and whereas school libraries provide access to materials and technology to meet individual needs, varied interests, abilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and maturity levels of the students served, and whereas the school library offers an environment conducive to reading and learning, critical thinking, creative expression, investigation, and research, and all students deserve a well-managed library to provide for free expression and access to ideas. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the governing board of Arcadia Unified School District that the month of April 2023 is designated as School Library Month, this 11th day of April. Thank you, Mrs. Chavez. Do we have a motion to pass this resolution? I will move to adopt resolution number 22, 23, 22, School Library Month for April 2023. Do we have a second? A second. Motion made by Mrs. Chung, second by Mrs. Yi. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, we do not have items <coughs> removed from the consent agenda, so we're up to information items. First item is Arcadia Unified School District Libraries Overview. Dr. Forsey. Well, it is fortuitous that our final resolution was school libraries <laughs> right. because Great we're about to get a presentation. I don't even weigh that out, but kudos to whoever that was. I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Shannon Will to come on up. She is our district and AHS 
librarian. She serves that role, and I think we've noticed on our learning walks especially the important role that our libraries play um, on our campuses and live into the exact resolution that you just read, Ms. Chavez. So take it away, Shannon. Uh, before I get started, I just want to thank the board and the executive team, as well as my own administration, for being so supportive and encouraging me to, you know, advocate for the libraries and share all the wonderful things that happen across the district libraries. Um, just a, short, a little brief introduction. Uh, prior to being a librarian, I was a high school English and AVID teacher. And I also served two years as an instructional coach. Uh, prior to coming to Arcadia, I was a high school I was a, a high school librarian as well as a K-8 librarian. I hold two credentials, the single subject English credential as well as a teacher librarian credential. I also have a master's in library and information science. So I would like to start with the elementary library program. Um, we have six fabulous library staff members. Um, one is right here. She's featured on this slide as well, <laughs> Ms. Jan Brown. And at, across our sites, our elementary sites, we serve uh, 3,720 students each week. Uh, this slide features um, just a visual. You get, a, you get the sense that um, students are engaged, they're curious, they're exploring. Um, we have wonderful environments for our students. Um, you can see some of them are listening to a story. They're getting comfy. Um, it's just a great place to be. Uh, I'd like to highlight um, Holly Avenue as an example of one of our elementary sites. Um, oftentimes, people assume you know a library is it's a room of books, and that's it. Um, but uh, Miss Engel at, at Holly Avenue. Uh, holds contests. Um, she reaches out to community uh, resources, such as our public library, uh, having displays of student work. Um, there's some statistics on the side there. She's circulated over, over 36,000 books uh, this school year. Um, some statistics about books purchased. And then the last stat there is uh, books weeded over the past four years. Uh, I, I realized that weeding is kind of a li it's library jargon. Um, it's just a tool that librarians use um, to update their collection, um, you know, making sure that the, the books and resources are relevant for our students. Moving on to middle school, and we are well represented. All three middle school library staff are here. Cheryl Tarsala, Donna Noda, and Lisa Lucas. Um, at our middle school sites, we serve uh, 2,110 students each week at our middle schools. And so this gives you a, just a small glimpse um, of what's happening at the middle schools. I know at First Avenue, for example, they just opened the Makerspace, which is an extension of the library, which is really awesome. I can't wait to see it in person. Um, we have displays. Um, this display, Donna created, and she reached out to the teachers at her school, the admin at her school, she reached out to me, she reached out to uh, Dr. Van Ostal, um, and seeing students, seeing teachers, and you know their own superintendent, who they you know they might not even know who that is, um, with a book in hand, you know, really promotes the culture of reading, um, which is great. And then we have the annual book battles. So this was from last year. Uh, we hosted at the high school, and we're going to host it again at the high school. And it's such a cool activity. Um, if you can make it, what day is it? May? Th I think it's May at the end of May. Um, basically, the students um, are given a list of books, and they're on teams, and they're asked questions about these books, and it's very, very exciting, and it's, it was a cool experience for me. I'd never seen it before. Uh, moving on to the high school, um, I'm Shannon. My awesome assistant, Gabby Torres, um, works along with me. I wouldn't be able to, to run the library without her. Uh, we serve 3,050 students each week at, at, the, at, at AHS. You know, that varies depending on the season, what's going on. Uh, during registration for the 22-23 school year, we checked out 13,234 textbooks. Of course, that was with the help of our awesome parent volunteers. Uh, but that just gives you a sense of the volume that's going on at the library. Um, there's our... Instagram handle, in case you'd like to follow. 
so collaboration um, is really at the heart of the library, um, not only with students, um, but with, with staff members. So featured here, I'm with uh, Dr. Deja Anderson and Joanna Moreno, our new college and career counselor. Um, we have a very close partnership with the Wellness Center. Uh, we host um, crafts. We, um, we ran a ninth grade orientation uh, this year together. So there were small groups and we were able to tell the students what resources were available. It was very successful. Um, we also develop, you know, when I'm thinking of ordering books, um, I'll touch base with her and say, you know, what's going with our students? You know, what do you think, what do you think that they need? Um, so there's some fiction books that maybe have characters that are dealing with things like depression or anxiety. So instruction, you know, at, at the core, I am a teacher, and I love teaching. It's so much fun to be able to work with teachers. Um, I provide, this is just like a little library menu of, of different lessons, um, research, information literacy, digital citizenship, it goes on and on. Um, featured in the middle, I work with the special education department quite often. And there I am in the classroom. Sometimes I'm in the classroom, sometimes I'm teaching in the library, so I'll go wherever I'm needed. So <clears throat> our students are one-to-one -one with the Chromebooks. Tech support is essential, and I definitely could not do that without the support of TIS. Um, specifically at our site, we have Nancy Sager and Ben Sager. Um, we started a student tech intern program this year, and they work specifically with um, Nancy and Ben, and they help to repair devices. It gives them valuable experience, and and they get to work with teachers, so they get kind of like customer service, and it's it's been incredible, and I look forward to growing that program. Um, uh, I also assist with, we have, um, as you know, more and more textbooks are being digitized, so providing support for teachers um, and students alike. Uh, we have Printers are one of our most popular items in the library. Uh, we average about 70 daily print jobs. And as you know, printers don't always work the way we want them to. So that's, that happens. Um, collection development. So this is, you know, when we're thinking of what, what books to add to our collection, um, there are tools in place where we can audit our collection, you know, and see if there's any gaps, for example, um, in our in our fiction section, in our fantasy section, specifically in that genre, you know, maybe, we're, we're lacking some books with um, characters that are Asian American, for example. So we can see where we can fill in some gaps, which is very useful. Um, these are, this is one page, an example of a visual book list. This is something I started in the summer. And this has been a really cool tool. We have it physically and we have it digitally. And for some students, you know, might be reluctant readers, um, going into the library can be very, very intimidating. So they just see a bunch of books. So we have something that they can thumb through and look based on theme in terms of what they want to read. This one is found family. Um, also, professional development. Um, I love learning. Uh, I recently, uh, along with some of my other colleagues, uh, attended uh, Reinvigorating Nonfiction. So we are looking for ways to further engage and just make the library a better place for our students and staff. So the library environment uh, featured here is a book tasting. Um, I know some of you have seen that in action. Uh, we do speed dating with books, uh, blind date with a book, which is so popular. It's, it was very unexpected. We had to keep wrapping up books because they were just, they were just grabbing them. Um, dynamic shelving. So there's kind of a trend to make libraries more like bookstores, um, to make it easier for students to look for books. Um, so we're always learning, you know, changing the ways that we, we present materials and resources. Um, and also our displays, of course. I love, I love making bulletin boards. I wish that, you know, that was sometimes like all I, all I did was design bulletin boards. Uh, this one was for Native American Heritage Month, and it was very cool, and it was cool to, to I actually ordered a few more books. And you know, students will stop, and there was a book list that was uh, placed on that display as well. And then they're curious, and there's a QR code to look at the California tribes that were in the area. So library programming. Um, this just gives you an idea of you know if you come into the library on any given day, you're going to see a lot of different things. You're going to see kids playing Uno competitively. Uh, you're going to see different crafts. Um, 
for the uh, mid-autumn festival, we did a moon cake craft, which was really fun. And then some kids were like, what's a, you know, what's, mo what's a moon cake? So we were able to kind of explain what that was, and it was exciting. And then the perler bead, if you see at the top, that is probably our top. Um, mo that's our most popular craft, but it's very time consuming because if you've ever done it, you have to iron, and my poor TAs are, you know, like, oh my gosh, how many do I have to iron? Um, but we just put, we put the materials out, we explained the craft, and kids just flocked to it. You know, I was worried, okay, we're going to put it out and no one's going to show up, and it, that's never the case. Um, so the library's community, um, I work with a lot of different departments and programs on campus. Uh, for example, the TPP and workability programs. Um, through these programs, we have seven paid student workers that are, some of them are featured here. And so they get trained on various skills. They uh, do different tasks in the library to help us. And you know, not only does it build uh, those skills, but it also builds confidence. Um, it's really fun to work with them. And you can tell, you know, they get more, you know, I'm their, I'm their boss, I'm their supervisor, I evaluate them, and, you know, they're always asking questions, and it's, it's, a, really, it's a really great thing that we have in there. Um, student Library Advisory Committee was something that a student approached me about last year. So we're growing that. They assist with crafts, they volunteer before school. Um, it's really great. So I have a lot of, um, there's a lot of potential with that group as well. Um, and then student-led workshops. So the crafts that I was mentioning, uh, we had a, a crochet workshop uh, right before spring break, and that was led purely by students. They wanted to do it. We had all the materials. That was a collaboration with the Wellness Center. And again, we put everything out. We had a screen, we had a dot cam, and students were curious, and they would sit down, and some, some were unsure, and then they just sat down, and uh, Dr. Dillman joined us as well. It was really cool. So looking forward to next year and beyond, I have a lot of ideas. Um, so kind of harnessing that and leveraging um, different groups and programs. Uh, the picture on the right is the Food Science Club approached me about doing a scavenger hunt in the library. And so we did it, and it was there were, I think, 40 kids running around the library, and they were looking, they had to look at certain, for certain recipes and in the cookbooks that we had, and they were really into it. It was really fun. Um, the bottom picture, bottom left, is our uh, app development team. Um, thank you, Mr. Gazanian, for um, spearheading that as well and supporting that. Um, these students created, I don't know if you can see it on the counter, um, we piloted uh, these scanners, so kids can use a, the app and a digital ID to scan to check out books. Um, so that's been really cool, and you know, if, if something's not working, I just email one of the kids, and they come by and repair it. So it's the students develop the app, the students develop the actual scanner. Um, the last thing is just you know, amplified, amplifying student voice um, and making sure that their voices are heard and represented in the library. Um, just some quick numbers, so March 2022 to March 2023, um, we had 319,680 unique student visits to our libraries, 207,348 books were checked out, um, and our, the average age of our books is 2002. So the last uh, few slides here, um, I thought, you know, I want to put a survey out you know, tell us what you love about the library. And I sent it to all of the sites. And I wasn't expecting many responses. And in the Arcadia way, there's there over 1,400 responses and growing. Um, so I'll, I'll be honest, it's hard to look through all of them. Um, but I picked out a few. Um, even, you know, teachers were encouraged to also respond. And I think oftentimes we forget that teachers also, you know, utilize the library. Um, and our staff. So I, I'll read one of these off of this slide. Uh, I love that our school library is just a really safe and special room where students can dive into new stories and just spend their free time. So a common theme was, you know, choice, freedom, you know, just, you know, being, getting kind of to just relax and decompress. Um, that was Abby at Foothills. Uh, 
there's uh, Felix at Holly Avenue. They have all the books I want, and you can renew for free. <laughs> so that was a, f a, a few of the elementary students responded, responded that way, that I can get as many books as I want for free. And, you know, that's really priceless. So we have some other, some other quotes um, from other students. And I will end the presentation with um, Julia from RK High School. I, so articulate. Um, I feel protected and supported at school, more engaged, and do better academically because school librarians create judgment-free learning environments, organize resources that enhance student health and well-being, and encourage students to read for pleasure. School librarians create a variety of collections that pave the way so all students can also better understand themselves and their surroundings. School librarians encourage me to embrace inquiry and learn independ independently by doing so. So that, I really feel like that sums it all up. And there's a QR code um, if you would like to go through the 1,400 responses in your free time. Oh, um, I, there's some really fun, there's some funny ones. Because it's elementary through the high school. And we've got responses across the board. Um, and that's, that's it. Here's a few more shots from the library. Um, it's, a, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be in the library. Um, I think it's the best place on campus, and I pinch myself sometimes that I get to, that's my job. Thank you. Can you see that QR code again? The QR code? see a QR code again? I also have um, Arcadia High Library stickers to give out. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, I think we can just use Julia's comment in place of our resolution next year. <laughs> so. Right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Excellent. Real quick while those are being passed out, um, I just want to say thank you uh, to the library staff. You know, we, we talk a lot about our libraries and obviously we, we see these comments. Um, but you can't separate the spaces as, as a library from the people that breathe life into them. So um, it really has been impressive this year as we've been at the different sites for our board learning walks to just see how vibrant the libraries are, how many resources are being provided, um, not just the environment itself, but uh, the, the resources that are curated for the kids to take away. So. Uh, just thank you for everything you do day in and day out for our kids. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Let's do it. Yeah. Does that mean they want us out there too? Stand up. Right. Okay. Be that way. This thing is so old. So old I can't do stickers. Like I seriously. <laughs> Uniform Complaint Report Summary, Dr. Horsey. I'm happy to report for this quarter we have no Williams complaints. Thank you. Next information item is Board Policy 5116.1, Intradistrict Open Enrollment, Dr. Forsey. 
I'm going to kick it straight to Jim. Okay. Um, this is not going to be as exciting as that presentation on the library. <laughs> However, I do think that it, it, it connects in that um, we do offer open enrollment so that uh, every year so that um, families that want to choose maybe a different learning environment or something like that, uh, we don't tend to get a ton of those because I think all of our schools are so amazing. However, we do want to be in compliance with the law. Uh, in reviewing, we were updating our um, ad administrative regulation, uh, which you all have seen earlier. And uh, in doing so, we noticed that there were some changes to the board policy, so we figured we would update it at this time. The, basically, uh, the big thing was we're adding uh, a section on if a student's a victim of an act of bullying uh, to our in, um, intra-district uh, policy. It prioritizes those students. We sort of already have a process in place for that, but we wanted to add that language because it, it meets the law. And then the other piece was we updated the language um, on transportation. So with school choice, we do not provide transportation unless um, we're required to for some other reason, which we would already be providing transportation. So those are pretty much the two minor changes that we're going to uh, bring forward and ask that uh, we can maybe bring this forward um, on consent for at the next board meeting. And if you have any changes, as always, let me know. Great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Jim. Um, next information item are our department updates. All right. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, welcome back from spring break, everyone. And so uh, our department updates are meant to uh, bring any relevant updates from our last board meeting uh, with spring break. Uh, has been a lot going on, um, but uh, we'll do a round robin and catch up on everything that's been going on around the district. And we'll start with business services. Dear Kesslin. Great. Thank you. Good evening. The update tonight for business services will be exclusively focused on facilities. And you may have noticed either in person or online that we put up our building, buildings at Holly Avenue. Very exciting. Uh, despite all the weather, we managed to get everything ready in time and they spent uh, three days last week bringing in the, the modular pieces that were being stored at racetrack. And so uh, just a couple quick slides here to, uh, um, actually I think it was uh, TIS, Brian Anderson and technology that put together this time lapse of the three days that they craned in the pieces. And so I'm going, that was not correct. Four or five. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to press play, and it's about, it's about a two and a half minute video, but we're going to speed it up. Scott's going to do that for me, and this will be the three days as they put it in place. Here we go. This is about 24 hours condensed into about two minutes. <laughs> Each one of those pieces, from when they brought it into the campus till they got it in place, that was probably about half an hour. And you know, it would hover where they're about to put it in place, and there were literally guys with metal bars maneuvering it into place. I actually took a picture, which I, I think maybe on one of the updates, but they had marked the foundation with these little red lines, like literally a pen line of where they were placing. Like one would come down and the next would come to it, and they were within a quarter, maybe half an inch of that mark. Unbelievable how precise they were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the fast part. I mean, there's still work to do. The insides, the outside, uh, and all the, the the grounds around the building. And I'll show that in the, the following slides in just a moment. 
That's it, the crane's gone. All right. Okay, so just a, a, I mean, those on the board, you've seen this before, but just a reminder for anyone that may be interested, this is an overview of the campus, that bottom left corner is where these two buildings are now placed. That was originally the um, blacktop basketball courts. Uh, over on the upper right of this image, uh, that is where the current portable classrooms are. Um, obviously, our plan is to have these two buildings ready to go for start of school. Once everybody has moved out of those portables and into the new buildings, we will then remove those portables and replace what, what was lost in the playground over on that side, on the east side of the campus. Um, basketball courts and, and whatever they may uh, be looking for. And just a reminder of what the building will look like when it's done. Um, it, it's not very pretty on the outside right now, but uh, once everything is put together, this is what we will have. That is from uh, Holly Avenue, and this is a view from inside campus. You can see how there's a uh, courtyard there with a, an outdoor classroom space, and that blends into the, uh, the field, the existing field. And I think that are, is all my slides. If there's any questions. Looks great. Thank you. Can you remind us, uh, it's TK and K classrooms? And well, upstairs will be the older students. Okay. Uh, so. I'm not sure of exactly how it's laid out, but the older students are typically upstairs, so fourth and fifth grade. We, um, we did put restrooms in a couple of the classrooms. Uh, they're just normal sized classrooms. They're not the oversized uh, TK and K size classrooms, uh, but we did put some restrooms in. Some of that space is also designated for uh, uh, smaller offices and meeting rooms uh, and th uh, a large section of the uh, the bottom south building is the new library. That'll be in the corner. Really nice space. Lots of beautiful windows looking out onto the trees. Yeah. Great. All right. Thank you, Derek. Moving on to educational services, Dr. Forsen. All right. Good evening. Thank you. Um, as uh, we mentioned previously, uh, we continue to work on the LCAP. Uh, that will again come to you in June. And this is the time of year we begin to go through our annual notification to parents. So that that big bulky um, document that many of you or all of you have gotten at some point, uh, we do go through that every year, take out pieces that aren't relevant anymore, put in pieces that are relevant, tweak pieces that there are questions about. And so that's that review process is happening now so that it will be ready to go out um, at the you know end of summer for parents to sign off on. Uh, some permit data since January. Um, now, some of these are for this year, and some of these are parents getting early start for next year. But we um, we've accepted 108 permits um, in Arcadia, and that's just since January. And so there is a lot of interest. We know our enrollment um, numbers have been very good, um, but there's a lot of interest also from people outside uh, the area and coming into Arcadia. So again, some of those are um, new requests for this year, um, and some of those are parents getting an early start. Uh, for next year. Uh, with From Andrea, we're excited that the artwork from all 11 schools is on display at the Arcadia Public Library across the street from the high school um, from the dates of April 14th to May 11th. Pieces from the display will be selected for our Superintendent Arts Awards. Many thanks to our school sites and parent volunteers for their help in getting the student artwork sent to the library um, and to help us get um, the pieces up. And then at the end of that time, getting the pieces down and back to the students. There's a, a lot of work that goes into that, and we can't do that without our parent community. So a big thank you to them. Uh, we continue to work with Hazel Health. That's a free um, online provider, um, and working out some details with them uh, that we'll be able to provide uh, more connections for mental health services for our students, uh, for free mental health services for our students. Uh, CGI day four, that's cognitively guided instruction. Day four for middle school math teachers was a success on the Thursday before spring break. Um, teachers worked with students using cognitively guided instruction techniques to improve their craft in an active learning environment. And so they were um, not just tr training and learning, but actually had middle school students that they were trying the techniques on, getting feedback. Um, and that was the second time 
this year that these teachers have done that. So this was their second phase in that. The Leader in Me Community Day will take place at the um, Highland Oaks STEM Lab on Monday, April 17th, with all elementary and middle school lighthouse teams meeting there for the day. Um, from John Tung, the Summer Extended Learning Opportunity Program has begun, or the enrollment for summer has begun. Currently, there are over 300 families that have expressed interest in taking advantage of these services. Interested families have been given directions to register their students with our partners right at school. And that is my update for this evening. All right, thank you. Moving on to Human Resource Services, Dr. Hirsch. All right, just a few uh, updates for you this evening. Uh, on, uh, for special education on behalf of do uh, Dr. Catherine Mahoney. Two main focus areas of the, over the next two weeks are the recruitment of new special education teachers and staff where vacancies exist and the planning for student transitions between levels for next school year. And in addition, student applications for our summer extended school year program have been sent out to parents. Uh, on behalf of HR, uh, as you know, we're in recruitment season, and I just want to recognize a couple of my HR team members. The first being Stephanie Paws, the certificated analyst who works for the district, and Carol Mora, the uh, classified HR analyst. They work collaboratively with our departments and school sites to make sure that all their needs are met as we are uh, flying our vacancies for next school year. So just a shout out to them and their hard work. All right, we'll move on to our Office of Strategy and Innovation, Greg Gazanian. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, just a couple quick updates tonight. Uh, one, it was mentioned earlier about the uh, app team at the high school. I do just want to share that while I've enjoyed getting to watch that play out, it's really uh, Assistant uh, Principal Michelle Liu who's really coached that team along. Um, I think we've mentioned a while ago, but our team of students actually created an app that allows kids to check out library books using just their phone. Uh, and we watched them code that from the ground up. So that's been very impressive. And um, Assistant uh, Principal Lewis did an incredible job with that. Also, just want to offer a quick update on our uh, exploration of diversity, equity, and inclusion this year. As you know, we've been engaging folks since the beginning of the school year and listening and going through that accordion effect of collecting information and sharing it back out. Uh, we've been exploring how we may want to continue uh, to explore that through the end of the school year. As you know, we've held several community engagement nights. Uh, what we've heard is people really appreciated those, but it's a little difficult to get there in the evening, especially as we move towards the end of the school year. So we're going to continue to explore ways to engage more people in ways that are more easily accessible. Uh, our last meeting was productive, but not too many people were able to show. So we will likely be doing a survey, uh, additional interviews, and ways to just involve as many people as possible. Uh, currently, we're uh, continuing to engage in interviews. We've engaged most of the people who reached out, but we're going to continue to make that uh, available as an option. Uh, and tomorrow, I get to go spend some time with our uh, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion student group at Arcadia High School, so I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, so we're continuing to go through that process. Uh, if anyone is out there listening, uh, if you'd like to be interviewed regarding DEI and Arcadia Unified, please feel free to reach out. My, uh, I'm Greg Gazanian. My email's on the website, uh, or you can email innovate at usd.net. Uh, finally, I know we've mentioned a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence in education. I know it's a big topic out there right now. Um, we have been able to explore that in different ways in Arcadia Unified, and I just want to share this anecdote. Uh, as you know, uh, one of the functions of the Strategy and Innovation Department is partnerships. And I received an email uh, from a, an alumni, actually, who's exploring AI in education and said, I'd love to just talk about this. So I always like to share, one, what our alumni are up to, uh, that they're thinking about this, and they're thinking about us. And one of the reasons they reach back out is they do recognize Arcadia Unified as an innovative school district. So I just want to share we're continuing to explore what AI might look like in education. Again, no big changes happening tomorrow in Arcadia Unified, but we like to be ahead of things as much as we can. And certainly uh, with the help of our alum, uh, that always makes that a little easier. So that concludes my report for tonight. Happy to answer any questions if there are any. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And Ryan Ferran from our communications office. Good evening, everyone. Great to see the librarians here and go through that presentation of what the library does. Amber and I are there every week uh, with our interns, and they're just so accommodating. We have that space. It's Everything is working perfectly, and uh, it's just such a welcoming environment. Definitely not 
the library that any of us knew when we were in school. It's very <laughs> impressive. Uh, so that was cool to have them here tonight. Um, the Arcadia Invitational was over the weekend. Saw many of you there. It was uh, just such a great event. Got some numbers from uh, Rich today, the meet director. 3,700 athletes were here in Arcadia competing in the Arcadia Invitational from nearly 700 different schools in a meet record 33 different states, including Canada and Thailand. 12 meet records went down and two national records. So it's called the, um, the home, uh, what's the, uh, the, uh, Something in records. the home of national records, yes. Yeah. And uh, appropriately so, and so they had their 34th and 35th national record broken. So if you were there, you got to see two national records and probably some future Olympians. It was really cool. Uh, thanks to all the volunteers, so many parents and students volunteered. Saw some of our board members there. Um, without the volunteers, that hosting thousands of people does not happen. So that was great to see everyone step up for that. A great meet. A fun fact that Rich shared with me today, um, all the other top 10 high school track meets in the country are hosted at junior colleges or college campuses. We're the only meet in the top 10, and we sit at number one that is hosted at a high school campus. So that is a huge credit to our facilities, our team, and um, you know I think we would have outgrown the Arcadia Invitational years ago without the upgrades of our facilities. So that's a very impressive uh, statistic for us. You may have seen from Wall Street 24-7 that uh, they did a ranking of the top 50 best places for teachers and Arcadia Unified is in the top 50, so that was very cool. We shared that on social media last night, so our teachers are amazing, uh, great support, so it was really nice to see that recognition. Speaking of recognitions, it was also after spring preview, which was amazing and a great job by the high school. Um, we got many of the board and staff were at the badminton senior night and alumni uh, match, which is really fun and great to see uh, to see them celebrated for back-to-back -back CAF championships. And this year, they're 6-0 in league already and 13-0 overall, undefeated and keeping that streak going. So great to see that. And finally, we posted, you may have seen a local article about our trip to the California State PTA Legislation Conference. We had 12 delegates from Arcadia. We're usually the biggest group to go to Sacramento to advocate. When we're out talking about partial taxes and bond measures, people are always you know, wondering what else we're doing to increase funding, and that's something we've been doing, I think, 20 years now. The article said that we've been going up there and advocating, talking to legislators about funding and our needs, because there's a kind of a misconception that of the budgeting in California and how it works for Arcadia and different areas like us. So it was great to see the article and that is available on our social media and on our website as well. And that is my report. I'll take any questions if there are any. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ryan. That concludes our report. All right. Thank you, Dr. Vinozdal. Um, Next are our consent items. Do we have a motion to approve consent items A through F? I move to approve consent items A through F. Do we have a second? Second. Motion made by Mrs. Kinsler, second by Mr. Chung. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consent items pass. Well, we're now up to comments from board members and our superintendents. Um, I'll defer to be last. Um, Mrs. Kinsler, would you care to start? Oh, well, first I hope everybody had a wonderful spring break and enjoyed their family time. It was quite busy with, I, for so many different religions celebrating at the same time, so it made for a fun time period, I think. Um, that spring preview day was outstanding. I think the high school keeps outdoing themselves. I was glad to see the library here presenting today. They had a great table. I don't know if other people saw the 
the booklet of all those sheets. She showed a couple of them tonight in the slides. But there was a full, you know, whole series of them. Um, great diversity of books. I was really su pleasantly surprised. I, I, I can't say surprised because I would expect no less out of Arcadia you know, employees. They, they do always do what's right. But I was just thrilled to see so many of the books and many of the books that are ones that I would like to read or have read. So that was just great. Um, and the art show, all the different student things, it was wonderful. And I thank them for putting on, it on and growing it and being creative when rain hits during the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have. Thank you. Mrs. Charles? Um, of course, I echo the high school preview was amazing. And one of my favorite parts is the uh, art show with just the phenomenal showcase of all the different kinds of art, as well as the performances and talking to the kids and their clubs. I mean, I, there is no better way to find out what's going on at the high school than chatting with a student who's so proud of what they're involved with and the array from writers workshops to esports it's just mind blowing so there is definitely something for everyone um, i too wanted to echo the thanks to everyone that volunteered for the invitational it's an incredible event and it does run on volunteers as so much does in our district uh, we couldn't do it without them uh, another congratulations to everybody that was recognized in profiles and excellence i know that was our last meeting but you know uh, i just can't celebrate that enough that our uh, folks choose their peers and nominate their peers for what they see as excellence and um, I think that's it for me tonight just thanks and I hope everyone had a great spring break thank you Mr. Charles uh, Mr. John uh, thank you Mr. President uh, happy spring break or I hope everyone had a good spring break um, everybody uh, congratulations to Samantha Jung who will be the new assistant principal uh, she was class of 95, I was class of 98, so we, should, we were on campus about the same time. Uh, so it's great to have folks come back who are, are alums, and um, it's just a special thing for, for, for that to happen. It happens a lot in Arcadia, so it's really cool to see. We love to, looking forward to see what she does um, uh, at Arcadia High. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to go to the uh, reveal of the classified um, Employee of the Year, uh, Newt Mangin, uh, a couple weeks ago, right before spring break, and it, she, so she's an employee at uh, the cafeteria at Arcadia High, and what an, an amazing moment. Uh, she was just overcome with emotions, and especially as she was, um, she she was basically being toasted by by her uh, her, her fellow employees about how. Uh, she dedicates so much time and effort into providing nutritious meals to our kids. And um, not only that, but caring not just for the students, but for fellow, fellow uh, co-workers and helping them um, nurture them and mentor them. Um, so it's just a great, great moment to uh, celebrate um, excellence in, in our classified staff. So congratulations to her. Uh, don't think I can add too much about spring preview. Yeah, great night. Uh, I, luckily, I, I was able to duck out of the rain before it got really bad. But uh, great job with for the staff there to roll up the punches, roll up the weather. Uh, I, I did notice a lot of younger students attending, so not just um, eighth graders, but seventh graders, sixth graders, some some uh, some younger. So it's really good to see that um, for for students who you know, are looking forward to attending Arcadia High more years in the future than just the next. Um, and same thing for Arcadia Invite, Echo Ryan, and, and what um, Ms. Chavez said about uh, all the volunteers, just an incredible event. You know, I, I started, I, I last time I worked, the invitation was back in the 90s, and it's still a, an awesome event to see and participate and, and uh, help out at. Um, so much of work is done by, by staff and volunteers to have that event run as smoothly, smoothly as, it, uh, as it does. Uh, I just wanted to give a special shout out to Melissa Randozo, 
who uh, coordinated all the parent volunteers, all the student volunteers as well. She just did an amazing job. Um, I, I'm not sure I ever saw her without uh, a phone and a radio, one in each hand, trying to, trying to you know, go, go all over campus, trying to uh, fix things that needed fixing. But um, that's all behind the scenes. Everything else, you know, everything looks looked great. Uh, also, congratulations to Rena Shea, who placed in, I believe those are the 800 meters open division, um, one of our Arcadia students. So it, it is a national meet, so it's a, it's a big deal when our, our students can um, participate, compete, and win. So congratulations to her. Mrs. G. Well, um, everything's been said already, but um, I do want to also congratulate uh, Manjin as well. Uh, just from the pictures and everything that I've heard, um, it was a really great uh, celebration for her. Um, so congratulations. And then another congrats to our new um, Arcadia High School assistant principal, Samantha Chung. I'm looking forward to um, getting to know her better, I'm sure, as, um, as she starts her role next year. And then just a special thank you to the librarians for attending tonight and um, for the wonderful presentation from Shannon Will. It's obvious that they care so much for our students and it, you know, all of us have seen, like Dr. Van Assel said, all the work that they do to engage our students. Um, there are not that many school districts, I think, that have such dedicated librarians, so thank you. Um, other than that, I echo spring preview was amazing. I did want to give a shout out to the students who were in the progression group that kept playing during the downpour. <laughs> I was amazed. I mean, everybody took cover and they just, they stood out there still and played their <laughs> music and just entertained us still while we were all huddling and under the, the tents. So uh, thank you for the entertainment during the rain. Um, but yes, the high school always outdoes itself, and I'm looking forward to next year and seeing uh, what other amazing things that they do um, with our students and staff. Um, I did also get to attend Holly Avenue's open house, the, I think the night or two before that, and um, again, all the wonderful work the teachers and the students did there, um, and it was really amazing, and just feeling that same energy that we feel at every school when we go to an open house. So um, thank you to everybody who made that such a wonderful event for their students and families. Um, and yeah, congratulations to all our sports and athletics that are obviously doing really well and sounds like many undefeated and um, looking forward to the end of the season for them. So hope everyone has a good spring break. Thank you, Mrs. G. Dr. Benazlo. As uh, board member Chung shared about, looked like even a lot of younger kids were attending the preview. Uh, I had my twins along with me, so I was one of those that had them. And uh, they were asking if they could go from fourth to ninth grade, because uh, <laughs> I mean, they, you know, just all the hands-on opportunities from playing with the robots. And, and I have to applaud the high school for uh, thinking through plan B with the yes. rain. Uh, I was not there during the downpour, I got there right after, you would have never known it, right? Other than seeing the wet ground, because it just, everything was so, you know, thought out, and the kids didn't miss a beat, and the, the rows were just packed with kids, and, and, and lots of information, you know, it was so informative to move from club to club, and just the kids were so excited to, to share what they do and what they have, so it was a, it was a great evening. Um, also, congratulations to Newt again for our, our classified uh, employee of the year. Um, and, I, and I just want to say a special thank you to Ryan and Amber uh, for organizing. Uh, you know, this was one of those a couple years ago, a few years ago. It was like, hey, we've got this idea. What if we, you know, congratulated them and, and surprised them in their environment, like where they work each day. And, uh, and I truly believe, and, and everyone's been gracious enough to make it when they can, because there's a lot of people uh, to coordinate. But I really believe that that, that moment for some of these people is, is uh, so, um, you know, uh, validating because it is in their environment where they, you know, whether it's with the kids or the cafeteria or, you know, wherever they might do their job. And so I just appreciate all of the effort that goes in sometimes um, to make that moment really special for our staff that 
on a day in and day out do go the extra mile for our kids. So um, kudos and thank you to everyone. Uh, to Niels and, uh, and Rich, uh, you know, who lead kind of the, the leadership team uh, of the track and uh, field invitational, but then as we've been mentioning, all the army of volunteers that make it happen and uh, it just would not happen without all of those volunteers. So I'm always blown away every year. Um, Shannon, uh, Will, uh, and the entire uh, library staff, uh, just incredible job that they do. I uh, just appreciate the update tonight and I always learn a little more. And I, I've shared this story before, but recently being in Arcadia High School's library, I had the moment where I remember when we designed it and we designed uh, a small room off to the side where the windows, that windowed room in, in, the, in the library to the right to be a space so kids could actually talk and collaborate, right? Because, you know, we know the library's for quietness, so kids need a place to go when they want to collaborate. And now when you walk in the library, the whole library is just energy and, and just voice, you know, kids working together, the synergy. And then they've turned that room into the quiet room. <laughs> <laughs> Small space for quiet, right? But it just shows you how these spaces have changed over time, and they just really are a vibrant hub of the of the campus. So, so exciting to hear that. And then congratulations to uh, Samantha Jung, that uh, our new assistant principal. Just uh, appreciate all of the effort that goes into the the recruitment and the, the application process and the hiring. Uh, not just for Samantha, but we're, we're in that season right now. Been working with the Highland Oaks community, with the parents, PTA, and the, and the staff on getting that input. And regardless of uh, which group we're meeting with, uh, we have a large group that shows up because uh, people really appreciate being involved in the, in the process and uh, look forward to uh, the, the new energy and uh, personnel that we bring on staff. So very exciting time. And it's my report. Thank you. Um, most has been covered. Um, congratulations again to Samantha Jung, my assistant principal. It's great to see someone coming home. Um, congratulations to the Arcadia High School Orchestra and Chanteurs. Oh, yeah. We're winning it, practically winning it all at the World Strides National Performing Arts Festival in Orlando. Really proud of our students. We can't take things like this for granted. Um, and again, I'm proud of that, that uh, we made the list on America's 50 best places for teachers. Um, that's really a, a testament to, to everybody. Mm. Um, we, we all do amazing things to have great teachers and also make it appealing for them to come. We are a destination, not just for students, but teachers. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to adjourn this meeting. Thank you. <laughs>